Hi, I'm Angie, and I'm going to talk a little bit now about painting with children for um, these art kits. Um, this is the third video I've made, so if you want to go back and watch the other two, the first one is about the supplies, and I definitely recommend you watch that one because there's a lot of information. And the second one is about painting with babies and toddlers, and this one is about painting with children. So I find this age group actually the easiest usually to work with because they've often done painting in school, um, so they know the mechanics of how the paint works, and also they um, are still hopefully um, free and able to really just, um, you can give them the paper, the paint, and usually they'll just have ideas and go off with themselves. If not, they can sometimes use a little bit of encouragement, um, but please, again, this is not about painting in the lines. It's not about a controlled exercise where everyone thing has to be perfect. It's about letting the paint and the color and um, having an experience of expression and letting it just be fun, okay? So, um, for this age group, so this is basically school age group, sometimes, so these pictures already have a little shape on them, and sometimes that's nice to give a little bit of an outline and some direction, but, um, you know, they might want to draw even more, you know? So I'm going to show this, the paper. What I was going to say too, especially with, with babies, toddlers, and children, even adults, to find a really calm and um, quiet time to paint is really important and to have a mood of peacefulness. So go out for a walk first, make sure everybody's fed, gone to the bathroom, and create this nice space. And that way, um, we'll be able to take our time with it and enjoy the experience. And um, I think that's really critical because you wanna have your full mental capacity to, to do this. Okay, so here here's some paper, and you know what? I don't know what your kids are gonna to wanna to draw, but sometimes they like to do a little bit more detail. And you know, that's of course, they might wanna do some feathers. Of course, you don't wanna to get too much into detail with the pencil, because you're gonna go in with the paint. But the thing about the pencil is, please always draw very lightly on the paper. This is sometimes hard for kids, because they um, like to really make it nice and dark, but really encourage them to do it nice and light, because um, that way it won't dent the paper. You don't wanna push so hard that it dents the paper. Now, I'm just using pencil. Um, you can use um, pens that are not water soluble, but um, you don't want it to take too much over from the paint. So let, let's let the pencil sit. Okay, so sometimes you just want a little bit more detail and that's totally fine. Have fun with that. So here's some feathers I painted or drew on the bird, but you don't have to be realistic. They can paint patterns, swirls, you know, let them just do what they want um, and enjoy that. You can also spray it, and sometimes spraying with kids, if they're very controlled, and like I did, something very um, detailed, sometimes adding a bit of spray lets it be much more free, you know, and it lets the paint sort of move around the paper more. So you can just give it a couple squirts, and when they're old enough, you can show them how to squirt. Don't squirt so much that the entire paper is wet. Squirt so there's little daubs and blobs of, pa of, of water, and you can still see the dry paper underneath. That's really important because if your paper gets too soaked, it will get all muddy, the paper starts to come apart, and then it, your painting isn't um, gonna stay together. Okay, and of course, I always show people this, if you get too much water and too much paint on your paper, you can always use toilet paper or paper towel and dab it, and it will, you will be surprised at how much paint and water is lifted off, okay? So with kits, again, usually start with the lightest color. That's a, always a good strategy. Okay, and again, and with kids, you can also do this one day, and let's say they just do the yellow, and they color in the yellow, and that's, that's really fun. And then the next day, they can come back and do blue, um, because then the blue and the yellow won't mix. Um, the blue will sit right up on top of that paint. But if they want, in the same time, to paint some blue, they can experiment with letting the paints really run together and enjoy playing together and making something beautiful. And again, for lot, if they're getting frustrated because it's really wet and you've sprayed it um, the first round, let it dry and then go in and with your brush, see the brush is quite pointy at the end, you can get quite a lot of detail and you can put that in right over top and um, it won't be all spreading out. Another thing I like to show kids is that a lot of people don't realize, they see watercolor paintings and they think, oh my gosh, how can I control it? It just seems to flow everywhere. Now you control it by the use of the water. So this part of my painting is very, very dry. So I can go in with the paint 
and I just use a little bit. Always make sure everyone's used to just using a little bit of paint and you're not digging it up and using a whole lot of paint. This paint should last you a long time. Okay, so I can go in on this dry area and I can draw quite a lot of detail, okay? But if I go into the wet area, you will see that it starts to spread out, okay? And no matter how wet, how wet it is, that's where it starts to really spread, okay? Now, again, I can, if I draw on, the, on there and I'm, I want to like let it be a little bit more free, I can add water to pair areas I've already painted, even if it's already dried, you know? And sometimes, even if it's slightly wet, I can then dab it and you can see it's lighter and it has a much more mottled effect. Another thing I can do is, let's say I want to paint just this area here and I'm, it's going to take me a really long time and I um, don't want the paint to run into the other part. So what I can do is paint with just water first, okay? Because the paint is going to want to stick to where the water is. It's not going to flow, free flow, like you see in watercolor paintings often. It's not going to free flow into the rest of the paper. It's going to go where it's wet. So with your water, you be controlled and you do it just where you want to paint. Then you go in with your paint and you let just the paint fill up that space. As you can see, the, paint, the colors here I've chosen are really pretty, just even on their own. You don't need to mix them. Of course, they look really lovely mixed as well. It shouldn't be, it should never get very muddy because these colors are happy together and they should always create some lovely blue, green, and yellow tones. So there, and as you can see, even though the paint is quite wet, it won't run into the area, but it might run and bleed around here, which is good. We want some lighter and darker areas. So these are the, some of the things you can do with kids. Um, of course, always encourage them um, let them enjoy and experiment. Um, if they're unhappy or they get upset because it's something they didn't want, take a break from it, come back at it the next day, look at its pros, look at its cons. You can, again, erase very gently by just adding a little bit of water and you can make certain parts lighter. You might not be able, it will stain the paper, but you can make it lighter. And again, afterwards you can add more detail with a pen or pencil. Um, and just enjoy yourselves. Put on some classical music and just paint away. Thanks.